Welcome back to Bottom Line Up Front, the YouTube channel where we travel and go on adventures. And today's adventure is Petra. It's one of the new seven wonders of the world. We're just going to tell you what we'd recommend if you're going to come visit Petra. We would say two days if you really want to see everything and you should get your tickets with your Jordan Pass, which includes your visa. It's much cheaper that way. The method that we've done is we've showed up. We came very early as soon as it opened at 6 a.m. Saw the treasury, which is one of the most iconic things of Petra. And then, you know, there was no crowd there. So that's perfect. And we pushed all the way to the monastery because it's the most important climb you're going to do because the monastery is just massive. There's a nice cafe up there anyway you can hang out have a tea have a coffee and then maybe your second day if you didn't come early the first day you can come for sunrise or get a tour guide or just scramble around and explore all the different chapels and the tombs and the facades it's just such a cool place and i definitely recommend coming here Currently 612. We said we wanted to get here super early so that we can avoid whatever crowds there are. Okay, so we have the Jordan Pass, which is like this mobile um, visa and pass to a whole bunch of different places in Jordan. And so you go to the ticket office, you exchange that for your actual tickets, and then this gives you access for the two days. Usually there's a bunch of um, horse-drawn carriages or horses you can ride because it's actually a little bit of a hike to get to Petra from the entrance of the park. You don't just walk right in. We're here so early that I only see one little horse over there and we wouldn't really do that anyway. We'd rather just walk. The walk through the canyon is super scenic and beautiful in the morning. First thing you'll see when you exit the canyon at the entrance to Petra is the treasury, which is probably the most famous uh, carving. We're gonna see if we can hike up and get a cool vantage point. I don't like cats. I don't like cats. Just shoot it, just shoot it. They call it the treasury, but it's not a treasury. They didn't like hold money in there. Uh, it's actually a mausoleum for one of the Nabataean kings. But when some people found it, they saw that urn at the top. I'll show you, there's an urn at the top and they thought, the rumor was there was treasure inside of the urn. There's actually a bunch of bullet holes in it because they shot it up trying to find the treasure, called it the treasury. No, it's a mausoleum, it's a tomb. Okay, it should be pretty obvious when you come how to get to the vantage point where we were just at, but when you approach the treasury, make a hard right, you'll see a big slope of what looks like um, avalanche rubble, and there's like some switchbacks, you go up, and you just kind of scramble up there. Just make sure you've got shoes with good tread, otherwise you'll be fine. There are a lot of different hikes you can do. We've opted for the high place of sacrifice. Early this morning, before it gets too hot. Should be a short hike. This is the high place of sacrifice at Petra. It's an amazing viewpoint, so definitely worth the hike. I'd recommend doing it first thing in the morning because it's already getting warm. And the map that you get will tell you, this trail takes one and a half to two hours. This one takes four hours. This one takes six hours. So you need to be somewhat fit and ready to hike because if you look at the elevation change, we're up here. And I don't think you can do all the trails in one day, maybe two days. The park ranger at the top of the high place of sacrifice told us that the monastery, which I believe is the largest facade carving in all of Petra, that the light's best around after 10, 11 o'clock, which is good intel because now we don't have to run over there since we got here so early, uh, we could get there way before that, but now we can just kind of chill since we saw the treasury first without a bunch of people. We can hang out, go to a cafe,
So what is Petra? If you don't know exactly, it's the capital of the former Nabatine Kingdom. We'll tell you more about the Nabatines later, but just know that it was lost to mankind for about a thousand years, and once it was rediscovered, it was like, oh my gosh, this is just out of this world. And now, you can walk around and explore, feel like Indiana Jones, or you're just discovering a new planet. It's just really, really cool. It is 921. We are starting the hike up to the monastery. Thank you. Way more water than I expected for a dollar, so. Not so bad so far, guys. Um, just gotta keep a steady pace. It's awfully dry out here in the desert. Okay, it's 9.57, so that took maybe 35 minutes or so, and this is pretty massive. Of all the hikes to do, this is probably the one you wanna do because this is the largest carving facade in the stone. It's, it is super impressive, and that hike, I had prepared myself for some grueling hike, and we passed some people, and we're like, don't worry guys, you're like, two minutes away. We're like, oh, we thought we were halfway. Cool. Okay, so at the monastery, there's a nice little cafe. If you go right past that, there's a rock that you can scramble up on and get a nice little vantage point. Maggie, there's baby goats. I thought you'd like that. So. They call it the monastery, but it's, it's, it wasn't originally a monastery, it was just used for uh, religious rituals, but then the Romans turned it into a church, or the Nabatines turned it into a church once the Romans conquered and made them Christian. And now we call it the monastery. Hi. Hello. So there's actually a really nice cafe spot right in front of the monastery. You can hike up behind it, which Maggie and I did, and we kind of like played with some goats and got some other vantage points, but spend some time here just checking out the detail of this carving. And uh, they've got everything from Oreos to coffee to soda to ice cream. Um, you know, snack, snack stuff. They got snacks. If you don't come early, first thing in the morning, be prepared for a little bit more of a crowd. So the Nabatines, who are the Nabatines? Well, they were this nomadic tribe uh, on the Air Peninsula. They eventually settled down in Petra and made Petra their capital, but they were very smart um, tradesmen, essentially. They were master stone carvers, which you might have assumed based on how Petra set up, and they were masters at controlling water. So there's lots of different waterways and ducts, and they basically were able to channel the water wherever they wanted. People would take things you know, on a trade route from the southern tip of the Arabian Peninsula up to the Mediterranean to ship it all over the world. To cross this desert, maybe you needed a little help by some people that knew how to channel water and and they knew exactly where all the oases are through the desert, so they made their money that way. People kind of had to sort of use their business to get through the desert to do, to do trade, essentially. Frankincense and myrrh. I'll admit, I did not know what that was. I never heard those words in my life. Maggie said, come on, didn't like the three wise men bring those to Jesus when he was born? And I said, uh, I don't know. However, the Nabateans became very, very rich, in addition because of their trade routes, but because of frankincense and myrrh. They exported it for that reason and a lot of scholars are pretty sure that, you know, the three wise men came from the east. This is east of Jerusalem, and they brought frankincense and myrrh, which they know is a major export here. So the three wise men were probably Nabateans. Here's a quick pro tip for you. As you finish walking through the canyon and you're greeted uh, with all these tombs, You'll see the Roman theater straight in front of you. If you look off to your right, you'll see all these cool uh, facades and tombs up there. And you're like, well, how do I get up there? There's a secret way that we found by observing other people that paid a tour guide to show them the secret way. Now we're gonna tell you. So to get over there, you have to go through the cave to get up. There's a cave over here that you'll ascend up to get to the facades. As you're walking on the trailhead of the high place of sacrifice, you'll see a facade across. So if you want to go there, you need to follow this route, and it's pretty cool. So you come into the cave, and then there's a place of exit to ascend this boulder. And then from here, you can just continue following up to the facade, and check it out, it's really cool.
Okay guys, one more thing I'm gonna tell you about is Petra by night. You have to have a valid day ticket to do this. You can't do it standalone um, by itself. They do it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, so make sure your schedule allows for that. And what we'll tell you is try to be the first group. They do two groups per night, like a seven o'clock and like an eight o'clock group. Be the first group and speed walk all the way into the treasury when they allow you to walk. So you get a front row seat and see all the candles in the treasury. Go away, kitty. <laughs> you get a front row seat with the treasury because if you lollygag and get there later, then you won't get a front row seat. There'll be a bunch of people in front of you. Your photos won't be as cool. And then, because you want to get those photos while they're doing the show with the flute and everything because after that, they light it up in really cheesy neon colors for some reason. But it's really cool. It's kind of like Disney and like a ghost tour all in one. Thanks for watching our video, guys. After this, we're going to Wadi Rum and the Dead Sea and just more desert stuff in Jordan. We're super excited, super excited you're watching. And this is one of the cooler things. I understand why it's one of the new seven wonders of the world. So put this on your list. Jordan is super safe, everyone's super friendly, and it's a very tolerant Middle Eastern country. So I'd recommend this place. Okay, bye.